in this video here, we're gonna talk about how to make a relief sculpture. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get me a landscape. You can have some stuff in it if you want. It's gonna be a four by four size is what it's gonna be. You're gonna make me a relief sculpture. And you're gonna carve in these tiles. We're gonna oxide stand them. You're gonna make them three times the size. It's gonna be a one inch grid on the paper. And then I'm gonna give you one of these little things here, which is a three by three tile. I'm gonna cut them all out. They're gonna be a little bit thicker. They're gonna be three eighths inch thick is what you want these uh, to be. So you're gonna carve away the clay. The big thing you need in your picture is a foreground, midground, and background. And that's what you need to do. Like the foreground for me is this water up here where I've added some clay to it. The midground, um, I kind of just left the clay alone. And then the background is this background of the sky where I carved it away probably the lowest. And that helps give it some depth. We're gonna oxide stain these, add a little bit of a uh, watercolor to as well if you want to to give it some color and then I'll make them stand out a little bit more and give them that kind of a look so they'll have more of this look of what you want them to look like a little bit and that's what we're working on. Each of them also is numbered on the back with your initials on them when you're finished and done is one thing you do need to do and the video will show you that as well and we'll go through that whole process. We'll have some examples of some tile projects kids have done over in the past and see what some of them have made. And yeah, this is a project here. You're trying to get the illusion of depth, so it's more of a relief. So I'm trying to get this illusion of taking a flat image and going from there. Now, I'll let you know one thing on this project. You're not gonna be able to do it exactly like it. So you have to play around with some things. Give it the illusion of it. Um, if you go with buildings, it's a little bit easier to do, uh, stuff like that, but um, you gotta think about things. Like in here in the mountains, you'll see in the video, I use a rock, give it some texture. Um, I kind of get some loose interpretation of the piece. Give it the illusion of it. Like my most detailed things, probably gonna be my balloon here. And everything else is loosely done in the reflection of the balloon as well. I have that here in the bottom as well. And I just kind of look when I'm going on these squares. So whatever's in these squares here, I do the process like that. And you'll see it. So you're gonna grid this out. And this will be one inch, and these will be three inch squares. So you're gonna make it three times the size, is what we're working on. And that's what's gonna happen. So uh, yeah, you'll get all started on this, and we'll go from there. If you're in class, or whatever, you can email me pictures, I'll put them up for you, and you can go and get a grid put on them and go from there, or you can bring in your pictures too, however you wish to do it. So let's go and get started on this project. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, grid out my picture I printed out. You could have me print it for you, it needs to be four by four. It's the size you're gonna need to make it. You're gonna do one inch square, so I'm gonna go through the paper, take my ruler and mark one inch on all the sides. Once I have it, it's going to be, I'm gonna draw the lines down, I'm gonna mark them out. I'm gonna use a Sharpie here, make it a little more clear for you guys to see it. But they're gonna be one inch little squares I'm gonna put on here. So I go around and grid my whole picture. I have two images of my piece, one without the grid, one with grid so I can see it. Now I'm gonna mark the other direction. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna roll out my clay. Now I'm gonna roll out my clay. It's a little bit different than previously. I'm not gonna use quarter inch sticks. I'm gonna use 3 8 inch or one centimeter on my slab rollers what I wanna use. The clay's a little bit thicker on this project. And uh, yeah, I wanna make sure it's a little bit thicker of clay because I'm gonna carve away some clay, add some clay on it and stuff like that. So I wanna make sure they're three inch, inch thick. I'm gonna make as many squares out of this slab of clay as I have drawn on that paper. Once I have uh, the slab rolled out, I'm gonna to begin to cut the tiles out. They're all gonna be three by three. I have some templates or you can make one. If you're, so what you're doing is you're taking the image, blowing up three times the size. So it's gonna be three by three. If you want to, you can make a picture that's bigger so you can see more of the details if that makes it easier for you. Uh, but really, all you're doing is blowing up three times the size. So going from one inch squares to three inch squares. So I'm gonna make as many of the tiles as are there for me to use. You may be asking yourself, how many tiles do I need? Well, you need a total of 16, as the picture here can show you. Remember, just slowly cut around that little stencil I have, cut them all out, lay them on a board, get them ready to begin the next step, which is drawing out your design.
once I have all the tiles cut out, I'm gonna begin to sketch out roughly what I see in that image. So I try to, what's ever in the squares there, I'm trying to make the same kind of what's going on in there as well. I'm trying to make it just match as best I can. Whatever's in each square, I draw it out. Really take your time, look at what your image is. Really take the time to draw it out. Make sure you're ready to go. Draw out the whole image first before you begin to do anything else. Just a rough, loose rendition of where everything is located. Once everything is drawn out, I'm gonna to begin to carve away and remove the clay. I'm gonna work my way backwards to the, from the very furthest away to the front. So remember, your image needs to have a foreground, midground, and background. So right now I'm removing all the clay from the background area around the piece, the clay that needs to be removed the most. So I'm really getting that down. That's why the tiles are so thick, because I'm really gonna be removing a lot of clay and getting that thickness there. So I'm gonna make sure it's you know the thinnest part of the tiles. I want to make them super thin, but thin enough. Then I begin to work my way around and begin to slowly begin to carve the piece. Now, now everything's gonna be certain detail, that's for sure. It's not always gonna work that way because, well, it's an image and I'm not making exactly what it is. So as long as the proportions are correct, your image should come out pretty well. So again, just work my way from the furthest away all the way up to the front of my piece. And slowly begin to remove and carve away the clay. Now here, as you can see, the very front of the clay has got to be thicker. It's got to pop up more. So I'm going to add clay onto the surface. So I'm taking like eighth inch thick clay slab, which I rolled out already, and placing on the first couple of squares. So they're going to be the thickest. The second batch is only going to be half the, style, the squares because I want that dimension to look like it's, you know, give the illusion of depth. That's what I'm doing. So the first four are going to be super thick. The next row won't be so much. It'll be a little bit less amount of clay on there. I'm trying to blend in there because my picture is a bunch of water. So it looks like the water is closest to you. It's really close. And then it slowly goes further away. So I keep adding clay. And I do that, like I said, for the first couple tiles all the way to the back. As you can see there, I'm just adding the clay on. Only half of it on the second row of tiles to give it that depth. Once I've got all my uh, slabs blend on there, I'm gonna go back, redraw the parts already carved away. I'm gonna begin to add details and textures into my pieces. I'm really trying to get the look of the mountains in the back. So I'm trying to make the mountain stand out. I'll even use a rock to help with that texture as we can see here. I'm, doing. I'm just gonna do loose representation of everything that is there. Really the most detailed part of this whole piece, honestly, is gonna be the, the air balloons. That's what I want to stand out the most. Everything else is just extra part of the background. But I still have to get the illusion of depth. So I'm going back through, adding things in there, trying to give it more depth, trying to make it look more realistic like the picture would look like itself. And again, adding different layers onto the piece. This is just, as we talked about before, a lot of carving and shaping. The easiest part of this is cutting everything out. It's adding the detail and getting the idea across, which is going to take some time. Carving, removing clay, smoothing and blending, getting the best detail I can off my piece. Really give that illusion that it's actually there. So by the end, it looks three-dimensional and has more depth to it than it did, you know, like the picture itself, So I'm trying to do. Not make it look so flat, but give it some illusion of depth by adding different layers of clay, carving away certain layers, adding tons of texture. Lots of texture in various different levels really help this piece stand out the most. So we can see here I'm going back, smoothing, blending things out, uh, taking out some more clay. 
I always start off not taking off too much clay because I can go back and take away more. You know, try to really get the illusion of depth. Trying to show, you know, because I really can't draw it like you see the picture. I have to give more illusions by different levels. So my foreground is higher, my midground is not quite so much as the level of the clay, and the background itself is removed. Again, I'm trying to add more detail, trying to give that illusion of the water, the ripple effect of the balloon, hot air balloon over the water, and the trees and everything else. Trying to give that uh, illusion of depth that is there. You know, and I'm going back, reworking these tiles, cleaning them up, make them look like I really want to, trying to get that illusion of the picture that I see. You're allowed to do some artistic interpretations. I'm not exactly asking you to do an exact translation of it, but you still should be able to look at the picture, look at your tiles, and be able to see, yep, that's what I use as a reference. And I'm just cleaning up the tiles, working them around, making sure they're all ready to go. Again, I'm taking that damp cloth, going over, just smoothing out some of my uh, details, kind of giving the water a little bit of smoothness to it, make sure there's no harsh lines, kind of blending everything together. It's a good quick way to clean some stuff up. I can go back over, add some more details when I need to, carve away some more. I'm really close to wrapping this piece up, get to where I'm pretty happy with it and satisfied with the finished result. The last thing I'm gonna do for assembling these pieces, I'm gonna go through, mark them all, like A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, B4, kind of number them so I don't forget how they go. And then I'm also gonna sign every tile just to make sure I don't lose them. So I kind of know they're all mine and they're all ready to go. And we can see here, here's the finished piece, all laid out and done. With initials on the back of them, and they're all numbered, and the project is finished.